What is up guys, it's Ivan from Wonder Pass here and today I'm going to be doing my Witch deck profile. So this is going to be post G set free, so all the new support is going to be up for Shadow Paladins for the Generation Era. So without further ado, let me just get right at it. So my starting Vanguard is Promising Knight David. So David's ability is when Generation Break 1, when you would retire for one of your unit's abilities, this guy counts as two rear guards. So it's pretty good. Uh, Phantom Blaster Diablo or Geyser Dragon both use three or two rear guards. So using him, you can make the cost just a little bit cheaper. And because he's your starter, you don't really need to expend any of your hands to actually do it. So overall, it's a fairly good card. It's a better starting Vanguard, honestly, in my opinion, because you can use them right away at turn three slash four. So it's a pretty good card. If it gets sniped, kind of sucks, but whatever. Not much you can do about it. That's it for the starter. So I run for my grade freeze four copies of Mesmerizing Witch Fianna. So Fianna's ability. So when she's in Legion, you can counter blast two. Choose two of your opponent's rearguard circles. Your opponent reveals the uh, top ten cards from his deck, and then he superior calls grade zeros to those chosen rearguards. So it screws out what your opponent's columns. It's pretty nice. Uh, that's the whole goal of witches, to just mess around with your opponent's columns and then just be able to abuse that to finish them off because there's some cards that interact with great zeros on your opponent's rear guards. And this skill is an indicator of that. Uh, it honestly makes Fianna a really good grind engine, but uh, basically if you, your opponent has two or more great zeros, then you can sack one of your, a copy of a unit on your vanguard circle, so it's either her or the legion mate. And then you can draw two cards. So you can only do this once per turn, of course, because otherwise it'd be kind of broken. But it's a really nice plus one. And overall, it helps you cycle your deck and just give you the cards you need. Which is really need a hand size to be able to win the game. So Fianna is like the main engine of the deck. Two kind of blast seems a bit heavy, but honestly, it's really good. It really screws with your opponent up really hard. Then I run two copies of Cultus, which Rius. So Rius is kind of like a finisher, per se. So when she legions, you can sack one of your rearguards with Witch in its name, and then your opponent gets minus 5,000 power for his vanguard for each grade 0 they have. So if they have like 3 or 4, like it's minus 20,000, and then it is possible to minus them even further with some of the Witch support. So I've gotten my opponent down minus 30,000 before with an ideal setup, and yeah, they, they just got wrecked, so... Two copies because she's a finisher, and I actually have some other great freeze that make this more of a hybrid build rather than a pure witch build. So, and then Rias also has a act ability which doesn't require to be in Legion, which is really good. So you can counter boss two, choose one of your opponent's rearguard circles. They reveal top five and superior call grade zero to that rearguard. Of course, I can miss like with Fiona and Rias, they can both miss target. So just be wary how many grade zeros are in your opponent's deck. And then for my tech options, I run one copy of Blaster Dark Diablo. Diablo is just there really as a finishing touch, like with uh, Phantom Blaster Diablo. It's very occasional that he's a first stride, but it honestly does not... Like, I sit on this guy on my first stride, but it doesn't really matter. Um, his, just fin his ability to just finish games when your opponent has two rearguards is just really strong. And plus, also something you can abuse with witches is that uh, you can attack their front row, which has like a grade zero in it, and then they don't really want to block that. So, yeah. Of course, this this is just assuming you know what uh, Phantom Blaster Diablo does. I will explain a bit later, but uh, basically, uh, with Blaster Dark, your opponent needs to retire one of the rear guards when you stride P uh, PBD Diablo, and then also if you're at GB two, then if you stride a Blaster card then cards in your hand get grade plus free, so it's a really good card, it's a nice tech option. And then my other tech option is uh, Claret Sword Dragon. So Claret Sword is, uh, he has an act on Vanguard, so once per turn, Generation Break 2, uh, you can sack two of your rear guards, and then he gets plus 10,000 and a crit until the end of the turn, so really nice, it's a damn charging lance, if you're familiar with uh, the original Phantom Blaster Dragon, not the Break Ride one. Yes, you got a break right one and G set free, and it's incredibly expensive. I'm pretty sure it's the most expensive break ride in the game right now. Second, no, uh, and then the second would be Mirror, of course, but that's just a side thing. Uh, so he also has a uh, counter blast one when you stride, then you can search your deck for a grade one, superior call it, it gets plus 2000. 
really nice. Uh, you can get a lot of advantage off of that. So, yeah, getting units is really good in Shadow Paladin. Like you want to be able to get a lot of rear guards. So, yep. And you want to not try to sp expand your hand to do that too. So that makes witches honestly a lot more powerful because previously they needed to commit really hard to field to be able to get rear guards. But now with the G support, they really got a really nice boost. I think they're pretty strong right now, but it's arguably how competitive they are. I'll talk more about that later though. Uh, starting off with the grade twos, I run three copies of Dark Knight Maiden Maha. So Maha's ability is when she attacks a vanguard, if she's boosted and you're at GB1. Then you can superior call a grade 1 unit and call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck. It's a very nice card. Uh, it can really help you build your back line. This combined with Claret Sword Dragon really lets you build a field and it's really nice. Maha is like a beast in this deck. I don't run her at 4 because it costs too much counter blast and you really need to be counter blast efficient in this deck. So, And she's also not a witch so usually that's not too big of a deal but for my grade 2s I really want most of them to be witches, so. Uh, right, then running for the Legion Mate for Fianna, as you might be able to tell from the artwork. Uh, virtual Reality Femme, so Femme is a 12k attacker. Uh, 12k is actually a very important number in this deck, just because uh, more often than not, she'll be the only thing in your front row, but when you're minusing your opponent's power, then 12k is a pretty huge number because like they're gonna be sitting at like negative nine thousand or something like that, so it's gonna be really hard for them to guard. So Fem is like Fem just helps you scale the field early as well, so you can pressure early if your hand is good. So 12k attackers are nice. Regardless, you would want to run four copies anyways, regardless of what her ability is, just because uh, Fianna requires you to retire things that are currently on your rear guard. And that's it for that. And then running four copies of Inspection Witch Data Ray. So Data Ray's ability is when you place her on rear guard, if you have Vanguard Witch in this name, you can Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's rear guard circles with a rear guard. Your opponent chooses a grade 0 from her drop and calls it to rear guard. So it's pretty cheap, like Soul Blast 1. That's really cheap, like just to screw up like a unit. It's like it's instant spot removal if your opponent has uh, grade 0s in their drop zone. So also Legion Mate for uh, yes. Very nice spot removal, honestly. It's really good for a grade 2. You don't really need that much power, so. Then I run four copies of uh, Little Wit Skull Witch Nemain. So, this version of Nemain, or uh, LG Nemain, I like to call her, uh, it's basically like a G era perfect guard. But her ability is much different. Normally, the perfect guards now can unflip damage if you have a copy in your drop zone but with this Nemain if you have a copy of Nemain when you perfect card then you can draw a card and then ditch one from your hand it's really nice because you can draw before you choose what to ditch so potentially if you're trying to survive something you can look at you can potentially get like another 10k shield and drop a drop a grid free or something so it's really nice uh, you don't have to use the skills, so it's good. The only thing that sucks is you can't guard rear guards, but you don't really need to protect your rear guards because you're gonna kill them anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty grim. Not like a grim recruiter. Oh no, I'm just kidding. That's pretty bad, but yeah. Uh, then I run two copies of Blackwing Swordbreaker. It's a very self-explanatory card. You call it to rear guard from the deck. You got the Soul Blast one draw card. So a way to trigger this would be Claret Sword Maha. And honestly, like, just the sheer amount of advantage you get from calling this card, even if you draw into it, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, 6 is not a bad number. So, 2 copies, because soul is... You need to be really careful of how much soul you use in this deck. So, and then I run 2 copies of uh, Cherishing Knight Branvern. Branvern is a stride enabler. I honestly ran her because I found that um, you don't have enough cards in hand to be able to stride freely. Like, I find that... You, honestly, just adding two more really helped the deck, and as well, in some matches, you might actually want to go into Claret Sword first, so you can use her to search out Claret Sword too. So, yeah, Stride Enabler is always a pretty solid deck choice. Uh, the Common Gear kind of sucks, but that's okay. And then I run two copies of uh, Witcher Precious Stone Stana. Her ability is exactly the same as Data Ray, except it's grade 1. Reason why I didn't run 
more is because uh, you need to be careful about soul. And also, uh, I don't have enough room in a grade 1 lineup, so yeah, that's why she's there. It's a pretty good card though. Then I run free 10k attackers. So you might be wondering why I'm running free witch 10k attackers. Uh, again, I feel like the numbers are really important to be able to pressure your opponent with. And as well, this scales really well from, like, it can kill, like, a grade 2. So it's really nice for helping snipe interceptors and just be able to gain board control early. Because chances are you're going to ride into witch anyways. So if you don't, then it's just a solid 7k booster. It just depends how you use it, really. But I find that, like, she's just a really solid choice overall. It's also really solid during uh, Rhea's turn, too, so, yep, it's a good card. And also with Maha, it's very abusable, because you can call over stuff, and then just they'll be able to attack for a good number. So Then I run, for grade zeros, I run one copy of Witch of Banquet's Lear in the deck, so Lear is honestly my tech choice, because now there are a lot of good grade zeros that have abilities in the deck. As well, if you read Legion David back in the deck, then you can call him back out and be able to sack two again. So basically her ability is when she hits then and your vanguard's in legion, you can superior call two great zeros and call them the separate rear cards. So as rest of course, so that's pretty decent. It's actually really funny because you could interact with this and cap butler in extreme fight, but extreme fight, eh, who plays that, right? Uh Lear, I just like her because if you have her there and then not only do we gain one soul. You also pressure your opponent to actually be able to guard your legion attacks. Chances are they won't actually guard their legion attack because they are scared of Phantom Blaster Diablo's 36 with a crit and triple drive. So it's. Yeah, it's honestly a questionable choice, really, but I just like Lear's art and I feel like it's, it's not a bad card. It's a really good card. Adds more pressure on the deck, so I mean, pressure is always a good thing. Then for triggers, I run free stand triggers. Stand triggers are really abusable because your opponent has minus power. And also, being able to... The stand is a, really throws people off, so it's really good. Uh, and also, she has ability. If you place her on rearguard and, you, and your vanguard has a... And you, if your vanguard has witch in his name, then the number of grade zero your opponent has is two or more. You can flip one and soul charge, so it's pretty good. Helps you on flips damage. You could I could have ran the Shadow Paladin Perfect Guard that unflips damage too, but I don't feel like it's necessary. Then I run three copies of Howl Owl. Uh, Howl Owl, you soul charge him, you get give something plus three. It's Margle Clone. Gives you soul, gives you potential power to be able to kill someone with, so it's really good. And the draws are necessary in this deck because you need to have a hand size. Like I said, with Shadow Paladin, the most important thing is actually hand size. Although most of the time anyways. And then I run two normal crit witch crits, which just for a name in case you need to sack a witch. And then four copies of Goin. Goin is a really solid card, and it's the reason why I took out uh that grade one card that sacks another witch if your opponent has two or more than minus five. So if your Vanguard is in Legion and she's on a rear guard, you can put her on the top of the deck, shuffle it, and your opponent gets minus five thousand power. If you have two or more, if your opponent has two or more grade zero rear guards, so it's a recycling crit and it minus five thousand powers your vanguard opponent's vanguard. So you can use this while you're on Fianna too, but it's even more scary when you're on Rias. So it's a nice effect crit trigger and her art's pretty cute. It's drawn by Oni Neko. So and then finally four heals because heal triggers heals for days. Yep, uh, heals are MVP. Late game, like you can just le read Legion heals back in and it's just really solid. So, Stride Deck. So, I run two copies of Supremacy Black Dragon, Oral Geyser Dragon. Oral Geyser is like a monster. Like, he just. If you play this with Claret Sword and on turn three, you can hit around 11 card hand, which is pretty disgusting. No pun intended. Which, which, ha 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 ha. So basically his ability is Carol Boss 1, Soul Boss 1, unflip a copy of himself, sack 2 of your rearguards, that's a huge cost, but you know what, it's a solid card. When he attacks, you can reveal the top 2 cards from your deck, and then he gets 5,000 for each grade 1 or less revealed, and then you add the reveal cards to your hand. So it's basically a plus 2 with David, and then, you know, you can just like call like crappy stuff and then just sack it and just be able to fix your hand. 
It's really solid first stride. It not only it also activates Generation Break too, so it will set you up for a Diablo or a Claret Sword. So it's really good stride. Uh, and also, I ex expect them to go up in price honestly, because he's just really good. Solid card. And then four copies of Phantom Buster Diablo. Diablo pretty much like changed the meta entirely again. So Diablo is just insane honestly I find it's not just because of the guard restriction I don't actually use the guard restriction too much but uh, basically his ability is counter boss 1 you can flip a copy of himself in the G zone and then you choose your vanguard it gets plus 10,000 and a critical if you have 2 or more face up in the G zone so that already in itself is really solid 36,000 crit vanguard is no laughing matter and then just to top it off if you attack, you can sack for your rear guards, and then if your opponent cannot sack two of his rear guards, then he cannot guard. Um, that is just ridiculous, honestly. Like having a 36 crit stride coming at your face that you can't guard. That, yeah, Diablo is running at four for obvious reasons. Uh, I usually use one to like just pressure with a crit, and then I use the other. Like it's honestly so dumb because. You basically, in this deck, you leave your opponent with no choice. They have to call rear guards, but you can just mess up all their rear guards with witches, and then you can ruin their day with Diablo if they don't call rear guards. Some people don't know what Diablo does. I think you should know what Diablo does, because he's like such a meta, much wow. I run one copy of Rain Elemental Madu. It's mainly to interact with the Legion in case you need to fetch a great free back. Then you can fetch a great free back when you're in Legion. And it also makes it so that your stride is like a plus one technically. So Madu's good at one. And then one Grim Recruiter. Um, I hardly ever use this guy, but he's only basically useful if you didn't stride a Claret Sword and like your whole field got blown up by I don't know what. But it's nice on hit pressure if he hits Superior Call Grade 1. So how this deck runs, um, it's a really solid deck overall. I managed a top tournament with it just recently. Um, of, of course, um, my list was actually a little bit different during the tournament. I ran uh, Witch Draw Triggers, I switched them over to Howl Wells, and then I ran one more copy of uh, Dana. I just found Dana wasn't use as useful as much, and I would rather have the 10k vanilla. So, um, Overall, like it has a lot of solid matchups, and you can play like almost every single like there's almost every single matchup it's good at but there's only like a few like not so good matchups like uh, for example gold paladins is not good matchup because they run catch goal and then if they use catch goal they can just swap the zero back out for another unit and then Viana is basically useless in that matchup and then some gold paladin decks also play uh, slamies and gurgits so that can actually get around the Phantom Buster Diablo's guard restrictions, so it kind of sucks. You just have to be really careful for that matchup. Uh, also bad matchups, Neo Nectars, because they can just rush you down and just ignore your ignore all your stuff to get units easily. They can swap out their field back out, so that's also not an easy matchup. But it's I'm not saying it's impossible to win, but they're just not good matchups for the deck. But overall, I don't think this deck would ever see competitive day play because uh, I mean, which, let, let let me be real here. Like witches aren't really meta. It's just a like, nice off meta pick that you know. I like to have fun with this deck. Well, at least fun for me, not for my opponent. Her, her, her. But yeah, uh, my deck is really. I know the list sounds like absolutely ridiculous, like because it's not a really a pure witch deck. But trust me, it really works like disgustingly well. Uh, like, the amount of shared advantage you can get is really insane. And all the amount of tools you have is also really nice. Yeah. So that that's about it for the deck. Uh, I'm looking to probably upload some more GZ free content coming up. And I know I've been slacking a bit on, uh, on match videos. I will try to do a bit of a better job on that. I will try to upload some more match videos in the future. Probably I'll start recording again this week, but yep, that's about it for this deck profile. I appreciate if you guys are still watching this, because I know I ramble on a lot about my deck profiles, but yeah, I appreciate 
the time you spend to watch my full video. Just be able to understand what I put into the deck, not just have a list, but be able to understand the deck completely. So yeah, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, I'll see you guys next time.